the African uh, consultations on uh, deepening stakeholders' activity, uh, which, as uh, you have seen in the note, I have uh, circulated and which was discussed in uh, also Nairobi during the second African IGF, was to see how the various regional Inter sub-regional internet governance fora and regional internet governance forum have uh, fared in multi-stakeholdership. So the objective of this meeting is not to report on what was done in uh, the various uh, IGFs or to report on the pre-conferences which were organized by the stakeholders. It is to discuss and to give us an example just in three minutes of uh, a multi-stakeholder success or failure uh, during the internet governance process. So I have here in the podium from my right, uh, Christine Arida, who is going to speak on behalf of the Arab IGF. After we have an, uh, Lilian Narwaga, who is going to speak on the East African IGF. Uh, we have Tijani Benjama, who is going to speak on North Africa IGF. On my left, I have my uh, colleague uh, uh, Yanke August from the African Union, who is going to moderate the next session. And we have uh, uh, f from uh, Yanke's left, uh, what is it? Emilar Vuce, <laughs> my good friend Emilar, who I've been working too much, that's why I'm forgetting her name, <laughs> from uh, APC, is going to speak about the Southern African IGF. And uh, Michel Kabda, who is going to speak about the Central African IGF. So each of you has only three minutes to give us a concrete success or failure on how... Uh, the process has worked on multi-stakeholder way, and then we'll give the floor to the participants to come up and give us their views on how to solve those problems and so on. So first, uh, we are going to give the floor to Christine Arida. Myself, I'm Makan Fai from Africa. Thank you very much, McCain, and um, apologies because I will have to speak and then uh, uh, move because I'm uh, also engaged in another uh, session, so uh, I uh, apologize for that. Um, and um, f first, uh, I want to introduce myself. I'm Christina Arida. I'm from the National Telecom Regulatory Authority of Egypt, and uh, the NTRE of Egypt is um, um, assuming or hosting the Secretariat uh, of the Arab IGF. Uh, the Arab IGF, for those in the room who don't know about it, is a fairly new um, initiative. It met only twice, this year and the year before. And um, uh, the, the first meeting was an area out of uh, Africa in Kuwait, but this year it was in Africa, in Algeria. We just had our meeting uh, uh, two weeks uh, ago. Uh, three weeks ago. Uh, so uh, speaking about uh, multi-stakeholderism, um, I want to give some background about uh, the Arab IGF um, from that perspective because uh, it was uh, it, was, it came in quite late, but it was initiated in a multi-stakeholder format. Uh, we, we kept discussing as an Arab community for uh, maybe two years uh, that we, or, or more that we need to do something about internet governance. And then we had a meeting um, early last year in Beirut, uh, in Lebanon, uh, and it was, uh, it had very good representation from all different stakeholders, and it was like a uh, public consultation. In this public consultation, the community that was present, uh, which was multi-stakeholder, expressed the need to have an Arab IGF initiated. And they discussed the details of how to initiate this process. And the, the, the thing they stressed upon most was that they want this process to be initiated in a multi-stakeholder format in all its setup. Like uh, they, they asked to have a body which is similar to, to the MAG of the global IGF, so we set up the AMAG. Uh, they asked uh, it to, uh, to, uh, to, to have everyone represented. So, so we went actually in this format very similarly like the global IGF. So uh, we had our first meeting, but I'll talk maybe about the, 
the second meeting because uh, uh, you, you asked McCain about what is uh, what are the challenges, failures, and what are also the, the success. So maybe the, from a success perspective, the Arab IGF has managed to attract interest from all the different stakeholder groups. So we have participation from all stakeholder groups in the big meeting. We have participation, their participation also in all other activities, funding, uh, we have uh, sponsors across different, we have sponsors from the technical community, like we had Afrinic, for example, uh, uh, sponsor some of our activities. We have sponsors from governments, we have sponsors from civil society, and of course, private sector is uh, the biggest stakeholder group that sponsors. Uh, we noticed, for example, volunteers in work are mostly from international, from the technical community and from the civil society. Um, we, we had two different hosts. Our first host was a civil society host, our second host was a government host. And this has uh, put some um, effect on uh, how the meeting is run. So, so uh, a bit of how the topics are actually discussed and how the participation, where the, um, uh, in which direction it goes, is related to how the, what the host is. So it's not always a governmental host, the host differs from time to time. The, the good thing about it also is that we, we run in preparatory meetings in the different country, also to different hosts. So we went to Morocco to have our prep uh, meeting to the IGF, uh, and we were hosted there by uh, the, the, the Ministry of uh, Te Telecommunication in, in Morocco. Uh, we have Rashida here, maybe she can then drop a note about that. Uh, so this is it. The, the problem uh, when you go into multi-stakeholder format, especially in regions uh, where internet governance is not very uh, uh, well disseminated and where awareness is not so good, is that you face st uh, some stakeholder groups that don't, uh, don't understand this multi-stakeholder uh, model. And uh, sometimes they are uh, annoyed by the discussions, like we had some discussions that had some tensions within the last meeting from different uh, government for example, uh, but that's okay. It's uh, you go out, you and you reach to new communities, and you you spread the news. Uh, so, so I don't know if the, does this uh, cover McCain maybe the what you wanted. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, uh, Christine, for uh, raising the issues in the Arab IGF. I'm sure they are uh, relevant and they can be uh, a lesson for also the African IGF. Uh, let us give the floor to Lillian. Good evening, everyone. I'm Lillian Naroga from Uganda. And uh, speaking about the East African IGF, um, for many of us here, I think we know a bit more about the East African IGF, where we started in 2008 and how far we've come. But uh, uh, utilizing the three or ten minutes, I don't know, Makane will have to cut me short if I get overboard. But um, I'll speak more about uh, challenges and uh, successes. Speaking always, I think it's always good to start with the success stories. Um, we've, uh, like I said, one of the success stories is we've been able to hold an uh, East African IGF every year, despite challenges that always come up front. Um, um, I think we've been able to do mobilization in funding, getting uh, representation from all the five countries. And uh, because um, this is, uh, we coordinate th through the national um, forums, Uganda, Kenya, Tanzania, Rwanda, and Burundi. And um, we've been able to also feed into the global forum, um, usually get the speaking slots here. And uh, at least we have uh, usually representation from all the different countries. So I think for us, one of the biggest uh, um, success story in terms of uh, sustainability is uh, being able to get uh, participation and mobilization, having people to attend um, and feed into this. Um, speaking more about challenges, what we've seen is uh, participation, especially when we talk about um, our stakeholder. Groups, uh, different, all the five countries, uh, they have different um, uh, stakeholder participation. Um, this year, the East African IGF was held in Bujumbura. Um, whereas we had a lot of participation from the government, on the contrary, and the technical community, there was no participation from civil society. And uh, also, we had limited participation from countries like Kenya and, uh, and, uh, and uh, Rwanda. 
So that kind of uh, limited the number of uh, issues and the discussion in terms of getting perspectives from the, those two countries. So um, right now we're having a challenge of having uh, to go back to the drawing board and uh, establish uh, a, a stronger steering committee that can feed into um, the forum and also have uh, the original discussion, the original group that we started with in 2008. So yes, McKinney, I think the challenge right now we're having is uh, limited participation from the, from the national countries and also um, participation from stakeholders, government, and the private sector in the different countries. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Lilian. So as you heard, uh, the East African uh, IGF, the problem was the participation, and I hope uh, you can advise on the way to go about it to solve it in uh, the discussions. Uh, my friend, Tijani. Thank you, Makan. Um, as for the North African um, IGF, um, uh, unfortunately, um, uh, there is not yet any uh, session, any, uh, any edition of the, the North African IGF that, has, that, uh, that is uh, held. Uh, that is held because um, because of the situation in Tunisia. Uh, so um, uh, politically, um, the environment is not uh, is not the best for uh, uh, such an activity. Uh, but uh, for the national IGF, uh, uh, it it was um, uh, programmed that it uh, that uh, we hold it in uh, September. And also because of the situation, uh, the political situation, it is postponed to, to December and it will be held in December, inshallah. Uh, multi-stakeholder, the national IGF is done in a multi-stakeholder uh, manner, very well. The um, uh, North African, I cannot say anything since uh, no activity yet uh, has been done. In general, why um, the IGFs in, in Africa, particularly, uh, are not always multi-stakeholder? It is because the initiative came from one stakeholder, and uh, uh, there is a failure to make the other stakeholder join. I don't think it is uh, a, a lack of efforts, but I, I do think it is a lack of understanding. From the beginning, when we founded those uh, uh, IGFs, um, uh, the initiatives came, I said, from one stakeholder, but the, the effort to make the other stakeholder join has to be done from the beginning, before, uh, uh, before uh, organizing any, any uh, uh, session of those uh, uh, IGFs. But if you do it once with only civil society, I don't think that the others will uh, will join later. So therefore, t I, uh, in my point of view, has to be done at the beginning. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Tijani, for uh, your uh, suggestions and, uh, and comments, despite the fact that the North African IGF did not meet since their inaugural meeting last year. So uh, we hope that you will uh, meet soon and the situation in Tunisia will uh, be solved so that uh, you can uh, move quickly and hold uh, both the national and the regional IGF. Now, Emila from Southern Africa. Uh, hi, everyone. Mm, my name is Emila Oshay and I work with uh, the Association for Progressive Communications um, I'm from Southern Africa and hoping to be in West Africa very soon, uh, to be adopted by West Africa. Thank you. Um, I'm going to talk about um, the Southern African IGF and what our experiences have been. I think we are the youngest um, regional IGF in Africa. Um, we held our first IGF in 2011, and this year we held our, in 2011 in South Africa, and this year has been our second uh, IGF in Angola. Um, we are working, um, I think, 
in a multi-stakeholder model, uh, however you want to say it. Um, we are working with um, the government, uh, governments, uh, APC, uh, civil society, uh, academics. We are also working with NEPAD. Um, and for both um, events, we have been hosted by by governments, uh, which I think is a good thing for us. Um, and um, civil society has been able to to um, assist or you know to to give input into the agenda. And um, I'll just go through the strengths and the I'll not say weaknesses, but maybe challenges. So the strength is that we have had government buy-in uh, for the uh, two events, and we have uh, a coordinating team. Uh, it's not yet in place, but uh, we are planning to have a coordinating team being led by SADAC. Um, I think if you were the Africa IGF, you were able to meet uh, with uh, Cecilia uh, uh, Mamelodi from, from SADAC. Um, and we also we have managed to uh, fundraise uh, for national IGFs, not in all Southern African countries, but I think in four countries. And um, I think another strength is that we'll be able to maybe learn from from other uh, regional IGFs in Africa and uh, and beyond. The challenges that we have, I think, is, is our understanding of. Um, um, generally lack of awareness of uh, the internet governance space. Um, and in relation to that, what APC and other partners, and most of you in this room did was to uh, help in organizing the Africa Internet Governance School, the first Africa Internet Governance School, which was held in uh, South Africa in July. Uh, you know, to sort of bring us, not only Southern Africans, but maybe everyone on board uh, so that we can participate in uh, internet governance processes meaningfully. Um, so and another challenge which I think um, most of the speakers have talked about is a lack of funding um, for, for internet governance uh, issues because you go to a donor or a potential funding partner and you tell them about the IG and say, oh, so what decisions will you make? And you say, oh, it's not a decision-making um, space. And uh, I think the moment you say that, no one listens to you. So uh, funding has also been really a, a challenge for us. I think um, I'm done with the Southern African IG. Uh, thank you uh, very much, Emilar, for uh, singling out uh, the issues. I'm sure they are uh, somehow similar in other regions. And uh, they also can uh, help the success, can also help others. Uh, before I give the floor to Michelle for uh, Central Africa, do we have uh, uh, Mr. Carlo Afonso in the room? He's supposed to be a member of the panel. Uh, Pierre, Michelle, sorry, you have three minutes. Merci beaucoup, uh, Mr. Macan. Bonsoir, tout le monde. Euh, par rapport à l'Afrique centrale, puisque il s'agit de cette question maintenant, euh, je voudrais dire que la situation de, du Forum de la gouvernance Internet euh, au niveau de cette partie du continent essaie de faire son petit trop. Euh, à nos jours, nous avons déjà pu réaliser euh, quatre euh, IGF euh, dans les pays, à savoir en Centrafrique. Michel, can I try and interpret you? Ah, alors, Oui, tout à l'heure, personne n'a interprété. Hein? Ah oui? I'm sorry. Sorry for interrupting. Vas-y. Because we don't have language facilitation okay. and it's not showing here. Okay. Let me concentrate on Donc, euh, je disais que euh, quatre pays ont déjà emboîté le pas de, de, du Forum de la gouvernance Internet. Il s'agit du Centrafrique, du Congo, 
euh, du Cameroun et de la République démocratique du Congo. Euh, au niveau de l'IGF euh, sous-régional, nous en sommes à notre quatrième édition. Euh, le dernier a eu lieu du 29 au 30 août dernier à Kinshasa. Et à l'occasion de cette rencontre de concertation, euh, nous nous sommes euh, permis d'évaluer un peu notre parcours en vue de préparer notre participation euh, au forum qui, africain qui a eu lieu à Nairobi. Et euh, en notre sein, on s'est rendu compte que nous avions un déficit au niveau de la communication. Il fallait actualiser les mailing lists, par exemple, euh, pour ceux qui le savent un peu dans d'autres réseaux, c'est que lorsqu'on établit souvent les mailing lists à, à la sauvette, on se rend compte qu'il y a des personnes qui s'infiltrent et par la suite, euh, le secret de la sous-région se retrouve ailleurs. Et nous avons pensé à la question de la sensibilisation des organisations sous-régionales parce qu'on est un des, une des rares sous-régions qui euh, organise, essaie de faire des efforts pour organiser des événements, euh, notamment de la gouvernance, sans être accompagné. Nous, espérons, nous estimons que si nous sensibilisons nos organisations telles que la CEAC, la CEMAC, la, la BEAC, et la CEA, puisqu'il y a euh, une de, la sous-direction sous-régionale euh, chez nous, euh, ces institutions pourront nous accompagner. Nous avons pensé également à un plaidoyer pour l'appropriation des IGF par toutes les parties prenantes. Le souci ici, c'est que euh, les parties prenantes euh, dans notre sous-région ne perçoivent pas l'approche multi de la même façon. Cela suppose que, au niveau de la gouvernance de l'Internet, effectivement, nous ne sommes pas tous sur la même longueur d'onde. Qu'est-ce qui peut expliquer C'est sans doute parce que la société civile qui avait anticipé sur cette question euh, ne s'est pas fait accompagner par d'autres. Et du coup, euh, on se trouve parfois en situation conflictuelle quand il s'agit de mettre en route un processus qui est relatif au forum de la gouvernance Internet. Mais petitement, euh, il y a des responsables, surtout du côté euh, gouvernemental, qui commencent à, à comprendre, et nous estimons donc, en mettant en route cette action, que nous pourrions, dans tous les cas, euh, aider à mieux comprendre le processus et euh, échanger librement. Comme une des recommandations fortes, ça c'est dans le but d'implémenter et surtout de pérenniser la question de, du forum de la gouvernance Internet dans notre sous-région, nous avons estimé qu'il fallait l'organiser de manière rotative. La deuxième chose, c'est que nous devons, et ça nous l'avons exprimé à Nairobi, et nous, il est souhaitable que les dates des IGF soient fixées d'avance pour nous permettre de nous organiser. Les institutions, que ce soit le gouvernement, le secteur privé ou la société civile, a besoin, ont besoin euh, d'un du, calendrier pour pouvoir euh, mettre en route des actions qui, qui portent. Voilà de manière globale les, les soucis par rapport à notre organisation interne. Parlant de l'approche multi acteur Qu'est-ce qui, euh, en notre sein, peut constituer un plus par rapport à ce que euh, nous sommes en train d'échanger ici C'est juste qu'il euh, y a un souci euh, au, au niveau de certains acteurs qui euh, confondent un peu les institutions et leur point de vue personnel. Et euh, nous pensons, euh, grâce à, aux actions que nous sommes en train de vouloir mettre en place sur la communication, qu'on arrivera à nous faire entendre ensemble pour que, dans cette concertation, nous puissions développer et avancer avec notre processus. Voilà de manière succincte, puisqu'il s'agit de s'exprimer en trois minutes, ce que la sous-région a essayé de faire cette année dans le but d'apporter sa modeste contribution dans le processus de construction de l'IGF Afrique et du monde. Merci. Thank you, uh, Pierre. So I'm going to give a summary of uh, what Pierre, Michel. <laughs> je je, je m'excuse, hein, je, je sais que tu ne veux pas être <laughs> appelé Pierre. <laughs> tu veux être Michel. 
Oui, ce n'est pas, pas nos pierres, là. Il, 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 ce dont je parle. <rire> OK. Um, he said uh, that vis-à-vis uh, -vis the Central African IGF, uh, it is uh, starting to move uh, slowly by slowly, and uh, they have managed to sensitize the countries, uh, which organized the uh, four national IGF in uh, Central African Republic, uh, Congo, Cameroon and uh, in uh, DRC. Uh, the subregional IGF is it at its uh, fourth uh, session, which was organized in August in Kinshasa. Uh, he said that during the, their last uh, regional IGF, they evaluated their uh, process and uh, agreed to, re to update their, their mailing list uh, to include all the stakeholders. They also have decided to discuss with the regional uh, institutions, like the Economic Committee for Central African State, uh, the Economic Committee, uh, Monetary Committee for Central, uh, Central Africa, the Bank of... Uh, Uh, Central African countries and uh, ECA. They also did some uh, uh, awareness raising to all the stakeholders uh, because uh, the multi-stakeholder process is not perceived by all the actors uh, at the same at the same level. Uh, and now that now we said that the process was led by civil society, but uh, uh, government has started to participate actively, and in all these countries, uh, the process was uh, accompanied by, by, by government. Uh, and they have decided that uh, they will organize the, the, national, the regional IGF in various countries to rotate it, to be able to also sensitize again the national uh, uh, stakeholders. Uh, the problem we have seen is that uh, some of the stakeholders uh, Uh, think that the process belongs to them while it is supposed to be a process which is uh, universal and uh, should belong to everyone. So that is what was uh, uh, spelled out by uh, Michel from Central Africa. Now if uh, we don't have uh, Carlos Alonso here, we will open the floor for uh, discussions and uh, you have, uh, if you have comments uh, sorry we need uh, i think west africa is uh, is it presented represented here kosi is kosi can kosi i was say amenisu or uh, nena mary is going to speak after so I don't. nena can you give us three minutes on the issues Multi stakeholder issues uh, in uh, West African IGF, please, before we uh, open the floor. Thank you. Thank you. Um, let me just begin by recognizing the national representative from West Africa here. That's Kosia Mesinu from uh, BJ EGF, Bene, IGF Bene, and uh, Mrs. Mary Oduma, who is the convener for Nigeria IGF. I am nationally part of Ivory Coast IGF. Um, for this past six years, we've been holding the regional IG, the sub-regional IGF, and this year it held in Cote d'Ivoire from the 3rd to the 5th of July. And we were impressed by the turnout. So far, we can say that 2013, has been the most successful of West Africa IGF because out of the 15 countries, only two countries were absent. And at least 10 countries have had national processes going on now. Um, we had ITU, the West Africa ITU representative who was around, and we also registered the participation of Interpol, of international police, 
and that was very instructive to those who were there. One of the decisions that we had taken was that the country that hosts the West Africa IGF will also assume the chairpersonship until the next year. So currently, Cote d'Ivoire is chairing the West Africa IGF until the next session it holds. Uh, so the successes have been that with achieving the total coverage of internet governance processes across all countries. At, at the moment, we are 10 out of 15, and we hope to do 15 out of 15 as the years go by. The stakeholders are extending and increasing, but funding is still a challenge. We do not have institutionalized funding for now. We have challenges with ECOWAS, the Economic Commission of West African States, and the, the coordinators at national levels have sent um, a request for more engagement from the regional body, and we do hope that that will be achieved. What have we learned from all of these? We have learned that it is important to have national motivators, national conveners, and a national coordination, a coordination of all the nationals. That is what makes the sub-regional. So it is still most important to support the national IGF itself, because that is where the matter comes home, and that is where we can feed up. IGF needs to be a bottom-up process, and the best way we can do it is to recognize, to reinforce the capacity of IGF processes at national levels. I think I will stop here so far. Thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Nena. Uh, please, who has the list of participants? Can you circulate it to everyone and bring it forward, please? Give it to Kofi. Kofi uh, Aseminu, who is the reporter. The Francophone reporter, he will not have work today. So the Anglophone reporter will be doing the whole work. Uh, now we'll open the floor for uh, discussions. Uh, we have uh, 20 minutes. And uh, anybody who would like to have the floor to be brief and uh, give, try to uh, give provide some solutions to the issues which were raised by the various presenters. Thank you. Sorry, sir. We have Jameson Olufuye and, and Adian on, on remote participation, okay. just so you know. Okay. Okay, uh, if they have questions after they can, can ask, but let's give the floor first to the participants in the room. I'm taking uh, the first list. Uh, Fatih Mata. Who else after Fatima? Anne Rachel. Gender balance now. Please. The next one. Who wants to speak? Okay. What is your name, please? My name is Muchuru. Muchuru. Okay, we have three uh, speakers. Uh, Madam Silla, please. You have the floor. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. And thank you uh, to all the presenters here for the uh, efforts on the ground. Uh, some are more successful than the others, but still, it was good trying. I just wanted to um, stress on what Nena said uh, in concluding her message. Uh, national level is very important. And if you want to succeed uh, military stakeholder uh, model, we have to do it from uh, the national level. In Senegal, we really succeeded, mainly this time, 
uh, we had a, the equal footing, private sector, civil society, academy, uh, and government. We, we have the regulators, we had everybody together in the same room from 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. And we had very good discussion. And really, uh, we were really on the same footing. If every country has the same understanding, when we go at the regional level, at the sub-regional level, we can succeed the model. But if one country doesn't take it seriously, uh, it's difficult to do it together at, the sub at all the levels. That's all I wanted to, to point. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Fadim, uh, for your uh, suggestions and recommendations. And Rachel, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and uh, thanks to all the participants for reporting what happened. Um, being one of the sponsors of uh, uh, IGFs in the African region, as Afrinik, I would like to ask um, everybody um, that they make even more efforts at home, and I would like to really pause the question. Feeling the you know the heaviness of the budget that we have to put uh, in the community, we do take our development uh, uh, hat very seriously in the region. We have been supporting IGFs, but uh, um, in as much as we can support the Africa IGF and maybe the sub-regional IGFs, we can't keep supporting national IGFs. So I want to know, for the ones who have tried the national IGFs, what is it they're doing to really get the funding to support them and to continue that? And I'm, I'm saying that just because we have been swamped by requests to do that. And, uh, you know, we're among ourselves here. Let's be frank. Um, our budget is not endless at Afrinic. <laughs> there are quite a few things that we're doing you know, um, uh, among others, you know, the development agenda being supporting IGFs, and we're really happy to do that. Uh, but, you know, I want to make sure that people understand that we can't be funding, uh, you know, all the way to the national IGFs. And I would like to also draw attention to the fact that, you know, um, we can't be at all national IGFs, at all regional IGFs, at the African IGF, the meetings are just piling up. So maybe one of the things that we also need to do is seriously look at the way we are having these meetings and making sure that, you know, it's most effective, you know, um, because it's, it's a lot of money, it's a lot of energies. Uh, we're in a, in a continent where travel, everybody knows, is absolutely, you know, takes time, is very expensive. So please... Let's try and make it, you know, the, the meeting agendas, you know, more effective. And here I'm calling to ECA, I'm calling to AUC, I'm calling to, you know, all the coordinators of the regional IGFs. We need to have those dates together and we need to make the meeting agendas more effective because we can't continue, you know. We can't continue having meetings every, practically every single, every other week on the continent. It's not sustainable. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Anne Rachel. Uh, before going, uh, giving the floor to Mushuru, I uh, concur with Anne Rachel that uh, we should find ways to streamline the meetings. Uh, the session, in fact, which uh, just ended was on e-participation. And uh, I think... Uh, IGF uh, is uh, serious now in defining ways of having uh, uh, good e-participation. And I, what I suggested is that for any physical meeting, we should take uh, one percentage of the budget to build e-participation capabilities. That means, uh, uh, you know, we, we should empower at least one institution in a country with the money which was supposed to be used for travel, for DSA and so on, we take percentage and we empower one institution in a country so that when there is a meeting, then that institution can 
prepare all the means to have the e-participation of uh, part people in that uh, country or in that city. In, if people don't have direct access themselves from their houses, from their computers, if it's expensive, if there are technological problems, then that institution can be empowered and enable this participation. And also the regrouping of meetings, of course, also is, is, is very important. And uh, I believe that when we talk about multi-stakeholder participation also, uh, we should do try to make sure that all the stakeholders in a country participate, not only intellectually in the meeting, but also financially and uh, logistically, you know. When you put the private sector, the civil society, government together in a country, a meeting in a country is not expensive. They can normally fund it themselves, and they shouldn't look at the regional or international level for, for, for funding, because there is no travel uh, involved. Usually it is very little travel if there is. Uh, there's only lunch and coffee breaks and so on, and the private sector government should have a budget for this. So I support what Andashel has said. Mr. Mushuri, you have the floor. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. Um, my, my question goes to, to Nina. From a, a logistical point of view, what is it that um, a country can do to, 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 to set up a, a national IGF? Thank you. Sorry, I was also playing my role as chief tweeter. <laughs> okay, the question is, what can a country do that does not have a national IGF ongoing? Yes. So, um, I'm not a political person. So, the question is, what can Zimbabwe do? Yes. Is that correct? Yes. Mr. Muchiri, that lady there is originally from Zimbabwe, okay. and she's got a lot of capacity. Okay. So, first thing, know who is Zimbabwe-oriented, who is Zimbabwe-inclined, who is Zimbabwean born, who has lived in Zimbabwe, get today, tonight, tomorrow, get them and start a mailing list. And at the first question in that mailing list should be, what can we do? Begin that discussion. Make it open. Make a call. Copy me. I'm happy to be a resource person. I'm African. That means I'm everywhere. Copy anybody here you think can help. Um, copy Markan. And let us begin talking about what Zimbabwe can do. Then we can bring people from networks. So first thing is begin a mailing list. Begin the discussion. Then engage other people. Engage the regulatory organization, or authority, agency, people in the ministry, people in IT business, who manages .zw, the Zimbabweans on Twitter. There's a whole lot of Twimbo. There's a hashtag. For Zimbabwe on Twitter. Let's not make it a political issue. I know that in Zimbabwe everything can turn political very quickly. I'm going to be very honest with you. This is an, a process for discussing how the internet can be meaningful and also feed into global discourse. So let's begin a mailing list, invite all stakeholders, use all available communication channels, including social media, and let us call on all stakeholders. IGF at national level needs little or no funding, but what it needs is a process with all stakeholders involved. Then when we begin talk, we know each other on mailing list, it becomes easier to hold a face-to-face -face meeting. Let us look at our national issues in Zimbabwe like Zimbabwe has a big diaspora population, we need to take that as an issue. Um, is it a landlocked country? Is, we need to take that into, issue, into consideration. What is the cost of access? These are the things that interest all Zimbabweans. And please, 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 let's keep politics out of it. It's very capital for the success of a national IGF. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Nena. Uh, Lilian? Um, thanks, Makane. Um, just I want to respond to um, um, Anne's question or intervention and also probably to the gentleman from Zimbabwe. But I'll start with the most current from Zimbabwe. 
Um, how do you start a national IGF? I've been involved in uh, Internet Governance Forum since 2008, and uh, probably I'll try to share the experience from the Uganda perspective. Um, first and foremost, what do you want to achieve out of the, the Internet Governance Forum? Why do you want to hold it? You know, um, is it for the sake of just because it's happening e everywhere? Because if that's the case, then you're bound to not succeed. So I think uh, capturing what Nana, Nina said, before you even um, get, yes, first getting the participants from Zimbabwe who are here, but also when you go back home, try to do a mapping, identifying what the internet issues are, and then bringing the governance aspect, what is missing. Because I think one thing that I've seen is we in Africa, we tend to jump onto the global bandwagon, trying not to reflect what is happening at home. And I think when we started in East Africa, we had uh, a slogan that uh, we think globally and act locally. So I think uh, that is something that we should need to um, take on. Um, drawing maybe from, from Uganda, we've decided to change the whole game whereby um, we first hold online discussions, which is important because you never get everyone to participate face to face. So we have so many mailing lists, technical, civil society. We throw out issues from access, cybersecurity, IPv6, the critical internet resources, the, the CCTLD, all those topics. In there, we go on saving, getting the most discussed topic. So this year around, we tried it. And um, because one of the challenges we've been having is the missing voice has been the private sector. The ISPs, the telecoms, the people in the market, the industry itself. So what we decided was, let us try to hold the online discussions, capture the issues, and see how we can bring in these people. Because for me, I've realized that usually when we come, we have a long program, a full day program. At the end of the day, people come, you, you find that someone is not interested in probably IPv6, but it's, you have a whole you know, panel and they will not come. You have people who are just looking at a particular issue. So this year around, we had the online discussions and we identified only two issues. We, we identified access and we're looking at just the last, the infrastructure aspect of it, how we, sh how we can engage with government or try to address the issue of our redundant uh, fiber infrastructure in Uganda. And when you looked at cybersecurity, we only looked at the aspect of online freedoms, you know? And that's why we, we, we were able to get participation from the stakeholders who are dealing in that. We had funding from the ISPs. It wasn't like money per se. We usually identify a neutral, a neutral venue. We don't need to pay for it. It's usually free. We get ISPs to give us bandwidth, and then we do the e-participation remote moderation. Also, maybe the other thing is you could um, um, probably go to the ISOC booth and see if they can help because they have this platform where, which you can use for, for the remote participation is free of charge. So I think uh, it is important to address specific issues rather than just jumping on to addressing each and everything that comes on. Thank you. Okay. Uh, uh, Tijan, we can uh, continue to wrap up from uh, the answers from the Kudum. Yes, after uh, the remote. Thank you, Makan. One remark from Nina really made me uh, uh, think about how to make uh, our IGFs non-politic because the politic kills mm -hmm. our efforts. There is always problems in politics. So if we try to be far from them, far from the politics, but with the governments, it would be really uh, uh, an element of success of our IGFs. Uh, someone asked why, uh, why to uh, do IGFs? Is it, is it because uh, uh, everywhere there is IGFs? I don't think so. I think that it is a genius idea uh, to bring all the stakeholders together and to discuss the, uh, the governance of the internet. And um, if we don't do, others will do. Others will act 
on, on behalf of us. So I do think that um, uh, IGFs, um, uh, national IGFs, sub-regional and regional IGFs are very important because the global IGF, I think, has to be the, if you want, the, the sum of all the others IGFs. I think that the, the idea was, to, was that the, the national IGFs report to the sub-regional and the, sub, the sub-regional IGFs report to the regional and et cetera. And at the end, we have the regional IGFs reporting to the, to the global IGF. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Tijani. Now, uh, let's give the... Oh, let me finish here. Is it too urgent? No. Uh, you you can hear it? Uh, we have a comment from Jimson Olufu from one of the remote participants in here. Okay, please, go ahead. Send yeah. Me he say, uh, Avikta, thanks to Unica and Mr. Makan in particular for leading and steering the Africa IGF. Uh, I, I have asked this question before in Nairobi, and that is about what EECA and AU can do, get the regional bodies support. The regional IGF say in West Africa, East Africa, etc. I believe their support is crucial for IG to be depend in these regions. Thank you. You finished? Okay, uh, Emila. You can also try to um, Okay. Um, I, I just want to speak on two things. Uh, one that in Rachel talked about, uh, you know, uh, that Afrinik doesn't have an endless budget. <laughs> Um, I think what we can also try to do, maybe at national level, is to work with what we already have, you know, the different meetings that are already there. Uh, because sometimes you, she talked about having, you know, like being invited to meetings every other week, but you find that sometimes the discussions are the same. Um, so maybe we need to uh, streamline, like you, you said, and not... Nena also tweeted about... Um, uh, you know, do we need to look for funding from outside or whatever? But I think even at national level, you can work with um, uh, you know national institutions, uh, and then they can um, contribute in whatever way they can <laughs> without bothering. Anne. <laughs> okay, and uh, I think um, Mr. Mjuru's question made me uh, smile because uh, you know what can we do in Zimbabwe to have a national IGF? Um, I think. Um, Nena, Lillian, and all these other people uh, responded um, uh, already. But what I can say is there is um, an organization uh, that has been trying to, you know, help uh, in uh, organizing a national IGF in Zimbabwe. And the problem has been who can be our focal person, and I think we have that person here already. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so... Um, I think we can um, link up after the meeting and, uh, you know, talk about uh, what we can do. And uh, they are, you know, I think lots of people here can help us do, uh, um, can help us organize that first uh, IGF. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just saying you don't really have to look far. There's been activities that have been done at Southern African regional level. Okay, thank you. <rire> Merci beaucoup. De toutes les façons, Pierre, c'est un saint. Michel, c'est un saint. Donc, je n'ai pas de souci avec le, pr le prénom. Je voudrais ici saisir l'opportunité déjà pour remercier Afrinic pour les efforts fournis régulièrement envie de soutenir les forums de la gouvernance Internet dans certains pays et régions. Euh, comment faire pour faciliter la mise en place des IGF dans les pays Je pense que, euh, à la suite de ce qu'a dit Nena tout à l'heure, euh, le plaidoyer reste incontournable dans ce processus. Euh, une des 
choses qui se, fait, qui se font rarement, euh, surtout en Afrique, c'est que le, le secteur privé euh, ne s'implique pas suffisamment dans le cadre du processus. Or, nous savons qu'il n'existe pas de plateforme de concertation au niveau des technologies de l'information et de la communication. Euh, pour nous, le forum de la gouvernance Internet devrait être saisi comme une opportunité. Sans doute parce que euh, des gens ou bien des entités euh, ont peur de se mettre autour de la même table. Nous savons comment que ça fonctionne. Et donc, par rapport à cette question, donc, je, je propose tout simplement qu'on ne lâche pas prise et que ici, sans doute, euh, l'Union africaine, en collaboration avec la communauté économique, euh, puisse sans doute, à l'occasion de de certaines grandes réunions africaines, saisir les autorités afin que euh, la question de financement soit prise vraiment en compte. Parce que je, je comprends que certaines organisations n'ont pas les possibilités de soutenir toutes les activités relatives à, à la question relative euh, à la gouvernance ou bien d'autres activités des, des technologies d'information et de la communication. Mais il ne faut pas perdre de vue que dans les pays, pour des acteurs de terrain, ils le savent, ce n'est pas évident. Je vais pour terminer, euh, je, je me suis, enfin, j'ai omis de signaler que dans la perspective, dans la sous-région Afrique centrale, il y a le Gabon et le Tchad qui sont en route pour leur forum de la gouvernance Internet. Je crois dans les deux mois, si tout se passe comme prévu. Merci. Uh, uh, let me try to just synthesize what he said. He said is, uh, Michel said that he's uh, thanking Afrinic for the efforts they have done to support the internet governance process in the countries and the continent. Uh, he also said that uh, this support is uh, needed, even though uh, there is need to uh, involve other stakeholders in um, supporting the IG process, such as the private sector, and uh, said that our efforts should do uh, aim to that, so that uh, the private sector is also involved. It said it is not uh, obvious in some countries that this support will come, but uh, we should uh, uh, try to uh, do so. Uh, on uh, Jimson's questions, I. I would like to stress that, uh, well, uh, as um, what what uh, Anrachel had already said, uh, we will uh, strive to provide support. But I think uh, also when we are talking of uh, multi-stakeholder partnership, the sub-regions, the countries which are hosting these uh, sub-regional meetings also should uh, do their best to involve all the stakeholders because the Uh, those are the stakeholders who are funding, which are funding uh, a lot of issues. Even though uh, the IGF is not a decision-making organ, uh, it has some recommendations and uh, the sensitization uh, which it brings when it is host uh, by a country, when it is organized, uh, dealing with Internet. All these are uh, important processes, and uh, I believe the private sector should and will find its way in. Because when you look at uh, uh, the last uh, African IGF we organized in Kenya, the, the private sector uh, has done a lot in uh, funding it. In fact, they did more than what the government was uh, expected to do. So uh, the private sector is there. I think uh, it, we need to engage it and uh, get them involved in these processes. And uh, let me give now the floor before we go to the next session to... Uh, Auguste Yankee from the African Union. Okay, thank you. Merci beaucoup. Uh, I, I just want to highlight something you raised here is the e-participation. Uh, I have some, uh, some figures here. Uh, we have from the 2010 IGF forum held in uh, Egypt, uh, the African participation was only 7% of the total of participation. But when we include the, the, 
the remote participation, these um, rates uh, raised to the to 30 percent. You see, from seven percent civic uh, physical participation to 30 percent. That that means we can link the uh, uh, private sector participation by funding the e-participation, the remote participation, when, uh, whenever we will organize national IGF, regional IGF, continental I IGF, the private sector can come, can get involved in this uh, IGF by uh, financial support, the e-participation, the remote participation by uh, putting in place, by implementing the, um, uh, uh, the infrastructure we need in order to let all stakeholders, multi-stakeholders in Africa participate in our national, regional, and continental IGF. Thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Yankee. In fact, uh, that is true. We need to to, to really promote e-participation because uh, uh, if you can sit wherever you are using WebEx or other tools uh, or even uh, video conferencing to take part in a three days meeting, why do you need to travel? It will reduce carbon emission, it will reduce a lot of constraints and uh, uh, that's why I said earlier that we need to, to strengthen one or two centers in each uh, capital city where we have stakeholders so that they can participate together. In fact, they can be in a meeting together. They don't even need to be at home. They can come together so it will encourage them and make them participate better. So uh, with that, we conclude the first part of the meeting. The next one will now uh, uh, deal with uh, the institutions. But uh, before that, let us uh, thank our panelists who have... Uh, brilliantly made uh, clear, concise uh, suggestions and have uh, met their share of, of the day. So we thank you very much for uh, your participation and we'll uh, look forward uh, to the summary from uh, our uh, panelists. Uh, okay, now uh, the next panelist should come in and this panel will be moderated by... Uh, uh, Yankee August. We have uh, Mary Uduma from uh, the Nigeria Internet Group, uh, Anne Rachel from Afrinik, Baher Ismat from uh, ICANN, Fatimata Silla from Afralo, and Alice Munia from uh, Dot Africa. Et bien sûr, euh, my uh, young brother Emmanuel <laughs> Adjevi, je pensais qu'il dormait toujours, c'est pourquoi je l'ai oublié. <laughs> Emmanuel, please come to the, up to the floor.
Okay, thank you, everyone. We will start since we don't have enough time to uh, to talk about uh, enhancing. Where is my paper? Enhancing African stakeholders' engagement in regional initiative. Okay, um, as you may know, the African struggle starting with WSIS meeting was mainly focused on uh, having access to the infrastructure, having access to the internet, to the local content. In the nutshell, building the ecosystem on the internet within our sub-region. Today, having built this infrastructure, we unfortunately facing some cyber issues, namely cyber security, how to protect our data, how to protect our infrastructure, how to make our e-commerce liable. So uh, in addition to that, we have the capacity building from a, to the citizen, also to the government. Develop our national e-legislation, our national superstructure. Superstructure is the framework for developing skills and capacity. Okay, so how to enhance cooperation on internet governance between continents, how to emphasize the multi-stakeholder, how as African stakeholder do you consider, envisage the multi-stakeholder principle in internet governance issues? Okay, that is uh, in, a, in summary what we are, we are going to discuss now. And I have as a panelist, in my left, uh, Mr. Emmanuel Ajovi from um, uh, Francophonie, Organisation Internationale de la Francophonie. Uh, I have also at my left uh, hand, Mr. Bahé Esmat, Vice President ICANN. From right, Mary, Mary Uruma. Uduma. Okay. Chair of the NERA. Chair of the NERA. And also, also Madam Fatima. Chair in Afralo. And uh, Anne Rachel Ine from Afrenic. Okay, thank you very much. Um, I will not be long, I will give the floor to our panelists to uh, discuss about uh, this issue, how to enhance uh, African stakeholder engagement in regional initiative. Okay, you, you have each three minutes, please. Who want to take the floor first? So um, I'm going to start by uh, telling you just very briefly the, I guess, the story of uh, of Afrinik, uh, um, which is which started as an initiative from the uh, technical community and people who felt really uh, uh, not only technical people but some who were in the uh, the policy process, who at some point felt like. Um, you know what, Africa cannot continue being served by three different registries at the time, who got together and said, uh, we need to do something about this, uh, put together a discussion list, uh, met in Cotonou in 1998 to start the first, uh, in fact, uh, African Internet Governance Forum. That's how we called it 19 in 1998. And uh, uh, from there, basically worked tirelessly uh, with uh, the whole uh, continental community to set up Afrinic. And uh, Afrinic, though people do not know it, is really um, uh, uh, a consensus among you know, the technical community, uh, the private sector at the time, uh, civil society, but also governments. Governments have helped Afrinic from the beginning. You know, when you go on our website, there's a little bit about uh, that. Actually, we have a little something that tells the story of Afrinic. So 
we have had, um, let's say, involvement of uh, stakeholders, all stakeholders uh, in the region from the beginning. What we need right now is even more involvement because Afrinik is a community affair. Afrinik works with policies, policies that are done via what we call the policy development process. That process is a bottom-up, multi-stakeholder thing. You go to the Afrinik website, you can subscribe to any of the mailing lists, you can participate in all the discussions on policies that are uh, being done. You can uh, 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 say your views on uh, uh, the rate of depletion right now of IPv4 or what is going to happen to IPv6 on the continent. You know, you can help us shape the future of you know policies on internet protocol in the region. What we are seeing is that we have a core cluster of people who participate, but we don't have the really bigger community, except that the bigger community needs to realize that whatever that small subset of people who participate decide by consensus is going to come back and bite them. So everybody really needs to participate. The operators, the governments, the individuals, uh, the ISPs, civil society, we're all potential network operators and users, which means at one point in time, we're gonna be you know, needing those IP addresses and making sure that things are going on the way um, basically our, that our stake is being covered, okay? So we need to absolutely participate. We need to be there. And um, this is a process that is there and open for everybody. I would love to recognize here, actually, um, Walu Bengo, right here. <laughs> Walu is from Kenya, and he's one of our board members. No. And... Um, uh, these are all people. Walu is actually from the academic sector. You know, he's one of those who participate all the time in mailing lists tirelessly. Because, funny enough, in fact, the academic community in the African region is really a strong uh, participant and um, uh, a strong uh, uh, opinion maker. You know, in policy development around what is happening at Afrinik. So please come participate. We really need that, you know. And this is, I, I know that the continent is, um, you know, uh, only now being connected. But a lot of us are actually involved in, you know, whether the international, the regional processes. And I know that we can come down to making sure that the organizations that are supposed to serve us, serve us even better. Thank you. So should we just go on? Thank you. Okay. Please run. Continue. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, thank you. We're talking about enhancing African stakeholder engagement. Uh, we'll be think. I'm, I'll be thinking about you know the all uh, stakeholders: government, private sector, civil society. When it comes to um, to private sector, uh, the main issue is first of all, strengthening them at the local level. We know that we only have multinationals at the local level. Uh, I mean, sucking our resources. I, I mean, I, I hate to say that, but that's what's happening, really. And weakening our local uh, small enterprises in the, in the IT and internet uh, sector. So that's one thing. The second thing, so we need good regulation to strengthen the, uh, um, the private sector. The second uh, issue is, a, is around civil society participation. Uh, and for that, I'm going to talk a little bit about AFRALO. I don't know if you know AFRALO. It's the regional at-large structure in, in ICANN. 
And we're working on a capacity building program, and that's very important for us to be able to participate in policy development processes, as stated by Anne Rachel. This is at the regional level, and we all need to participate. We need to participate remotely, but we need to understand the issues, how it works, and how we can participate. Um, <coughs> partnership is very important. If the, pri if the local private sector is strengthened, they can partner, they can partner with civil society uh, to support them in capacity building and also to uh, allow them to participate I mean, you know, using funding. You know, we, we can say we're going to participate at equal footing, but if we don't have the means to attend the meetings, if you don't have the means to get connected to internet, to broadband internet, it's going to be very difficult for civil society members to participate. And government has, I mean, they have a very important role, a very important role to, to play. And this is a moment for me, a time for me to make a call to all civil society members here in this room that ICANN will be organizing an at-large summit in June in London, and all the ILSs will be invited. So please apply. We need more uh, ILSs, at-large structures from Africa. We need more, so please apply and get your accreditation before January so that you can come. You will be invited to attend and participate. And participate to the capacity building program. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, okay, thank you. Um, I just want to uh, paint a picture of what has happened in our region. I, wa I want to say that in our region, government plays a higher role. The, the highest spender in our region is the government. So we are still struggling to get the private sector to, to hand over the engine of development to the private sector. So it's a very, very difficult thing for us to do. So for that reason, because of that, government will play at ECOWAS level, play at uh, AU level, but will not understand what AFRINIC is doing and will not understand what um, AFRALO is doing. So. What, how can we stimulate? How can we stimulate? Government need to know the roles the, uh, these other ones play. And uh, we have uh, in Nigeria um, because of um, of um, of the peculiar nature of our, our environment, we have the business people, but they are not strong enough. So, as uh, Fatimata said, strengthening them is key and partnership is also key. So we need to communicate the roles of this other organization to our government. So AUC should play a part. ECA should play a part to be able to bring the roles and, uh, and the functions and activities of this other organization to our government so that government will, will, be, all in, uh, um, will be open to that. Second thing I want to say that I think AFRINIC has what it now calls AIS. I think, and I'm right? AIS, African Internet Summit. Yes. The, uh, pardon? It's all of us together because I want to bring out that, that issue. It's an initiative that all of us should participate. The AF stars should be able, or AI stars should be able to be part of it. If it is it half long, is it Afrinic? If it's half uh, half long, uh, Afro. All the, all the AFs should be Afralu should be part of it. In in Nigeria, um, there's um, an institute we have called the Digital Bridge Institute. That Digital Bridge Institute is a melting point where the business people, that is the operators, the government the academia, they come together. And they are the, they are the board members of, Afri, uh, of, uh, of that institute. And we need to encourage us, uh, us as African to be part of such a uh, program. So we have courses that can be run in, um, in, uh, 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 in DBI. 
which is easier and cheaper. Something like that is happening in Uganda. I think, I, I think it's in Kenya or Uganda. They have something like that. The, the Communication Commission has something of that nature. And um, the other thing is to have a strong expert group. Um, expert group is very, very key because it's only when you understand that you can tell others. Um, at the Africa IGF, you, um, a number of people that came from Nigeria because of my bell ringing, because I rang the bell, told everybody this thing is happening. So let's communicate to our people and they would also be part of it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Marie. It's well understood. Now I will give the floor to my, my please. Bye. Thank you. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Bear Asmat. Uh, I'm with ICANN. And um, uh, I'm here actually for uh, my colleague, uh, Pierre Donjenou, uh, ICANN's VP in Africa, who couldn't uh, make it to Bali. Um, so talking about um, uh, deepening uh, participation in multi-stakeholder models and uh, focusing a bit on, uh, on ICANN um, and on Africa. Um, I think, uh, uh, as, as said before by some, um, Africa is um, a huge continent, uh, 54 countries. Uh, there is a lot going on, uh, meetings and events, and, um, and of course for anyone, uh, either individual or organization, uh, we uh, cannot be at each and every, and every meeting. Uh, even with the increase of uh, staff and all this uh, at ICANN, we, we, in the past few months, we, um, we hired two more uh, engagement managers in, in Africa, one in East Africa and one in West Africa. Uh, but even with that, I think the reality is we need to um, uh, uh, consider uh, other means of uh, engagement using uh, technology, using the Internet. Uh, and this is what we call, or actually what, uh, what is called uh, digital uh, engagement. So I can, um, in, in the past year, um, uh, started to um, focus more on um, uh, engagement tools, online engagement tools. Uh, we started with uh, with uh, my ICANN. Uh, my ICANN.org is, is, is a platform that uh, provides uh, information uh, on uh, projects and initiatives and news uh, at, at ICANN. You can subscribe to the service. You can pick the you know the kind of topics that you're interested in and get updates on on those topics. Um, in every service uh, we um, uh, launch, we um, uh, are keen to make the content available in uh, different languages. Uh, so we have everything available uh, with six UN languages plus uh, Portuguese. Um, and from my ICANN, we moved on to uh, uh, exploring more um, and, and other means uh, of, of digital engagement. Uh, so we, um, we launched a platform a few months ago called ICANN Labs. And this is an engagement platform where uh, people can, uh, uh, you know, uh, propose ideas, ask questions, uh, 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 discuss uh, uh, topics, uh, and also uh, can learn about uh, certain topics. So uh, part of the uh, ICANN Labs, uh, uh, a major part of the ICANN Labs platform is uh, an online education platform. Uh, that uh, the, the beta version of which will be uh, launched uh, in the next ICANN meeting in Buenos Aires. And, and this is a platform to offer um, education uh, materials on uh, different uh, uh, range of topics uh, that, that uh, relate to, uh, to, to ICANN. This does not mean that, um, you know, the digital engagement is going to take over, you know, the uh, sort of uh, um, uh, human uh, kind of engagement, not at all. It's a complementary uh, sort of um, uh, element to help with the outreach and to help with, you know, reaching out to the millions of millions of inter -user, uh, internet users in Africa as well as in other uh, developing countries. Thanks. Okay, thank you. Uh, now is Emmanuel Ajovi, please. Merci. Uh, I would like to speak French. Naturally, uh, because of uh, diversity, diversity and multilingualism, I think this is important in uh, 
internet uh, area. Is it clear? Yeah, so you oh. are here two <laughs> OK. Um, la gouvernance uh, de l'Internet uh, est une question fondamentale. Et effectivement, l'IGF est une grande opportunité pour discuter de toutes les questions uh, concernant cette gouvernance. C'est pourquoi, uh, depuis le début, L'OIF, l'Organisation internationale de la francophonie, euh, contribue au renforcement de la coopération euh, sur le plan continental. Donc, l'OIF euh, participe et essaie d'aider les différents pays à participer à ces forums-là, euh, euh, d'abord les pays francophones, euh, pour, et l'OIF dans cette perspective, euh, essaie de tenir compte de toutes les parties prenantes. Donc, euh, il fait l'effort d'amener à ces forums-là les parties prenantes euh, dans les différents pays en essayant de varier euh, le plus possible dans les, la limite de, de ces moyens. Euh, maintenant, il y a quand même des questions qui se posent. Et je crois que c'est cette question qui amène à se dire comment améliorer la coopération. Euh, la première question, c'est de savoir est-ce que toutes les parties prenantes sont effectivement euh, euh, présentes, aussi bien sur le plan national, régional que continental. Je vous donne euh, quelques exemples. Est-ce que euh, lorsque nous parlons du gouvernement, nous disons le gouvernement, nous pensons surtout à l'administration et au ministre. Est-ce que le Parlement n'est pas une partie prenante Le Parlement qui vote les lois. Est-ce que nous faisons appel au, parle au Parlement Est-ce que euh, en Afrique, nous travaillons avec les chambres de commerce C'est vrai qu'il y a un autre problème qui se pose derrière le problème africain, c'est la faiblesse de l'industrie euh, d'éthique, de, de l'Internet, cette euh, faiblesse est réelle, c'est une euh, réalité. Et cela fait qu'on on, s'aperçoit que le secteur privé n'est pas suffisamment présent dans les forums. Il va falloir améliorer euh, cela. Il faut aussi faire en sorte que pour faciliter la coopération, que le multilinguisme soit suffisamment pris en compte. Euh, une question simple, est-ce que sur le site de l'INECA euh, qui fait cette coordination, il y a toutes les grandes langues qui sont parlées en Afrique Est-ce que les documents sont disponibles en français Est-ce que c'est disponible en portugais Est-ce que c'est disponible en espagnol Il y a des efforts à faire pour permettre aux gens de participer parce que si les gens n'ont pas accès à l'information dans des langues euh, auxquelles ils sont habitués, ça serait difficile pour assurer une vraie participation. Donc, aussi, pendant les meetings, il faut aussi faciliter, euh, faire en sorte que le multilinguisme sorte du discours pour entrer dans la réalité euh, concrète. C'est cela aussi la participation à, à ces rencontres. Mais pas de là toutes ces questions. Euh, la question que je me pose, c'est de savoir si le, le défi actuel, le challenge actuellement, est-ce que le débat, c'est de renforcer la coopération et le, et le, le, le principe multiateur euh, actuellement Est-ce que le problème pour le continent africain aujourd'hui n'est pas de commencer par déterminer sa position par rapport au changement qui s'annonce. Parce qu'on dit aujourd'hui qu'on doit institutionnaliser l'IGF. Quand on va institutionnaliser, quelle forme ça va prendre Quel serait le positionnement de l'Afrique Et dans tous ces changements-là, je crains que nous passions le temps à sortir, à sortir de vrais débats et s'occuper des débats périphériques. Est-ce qu'on ne doit pas euh, se, se préoccuper des débats de fond et aller un peu plus loin que la 
participation de toutes les parties euh, prenantes et, et voir quel est le positionnement de l'Afrique par rapport au débat à venir. Voilà ce que je voudrais dire. Thank you very much. Merci beaucoup, Emmanuel. I will give the floor to Macan for the translation. And after that, I will... No problem. Uh, thank you. Uh, I'm trying to... I'll try to summarize what uh, Emmanuel has said, even though he can say it himself into English. But he wants diversity and uh, he wants di different people to speak. He said that the intergovernance uh, question is essential. Uh, and uh, IGF is an is a opportune place to discuss all the questions related to, to IG. Uh, since the beginning, uh, his organization, uh, the Francophonie organization, has been uh, contributing in strengthening the cooperation uh, at the continental level by enabling uh, uh, countries to participate in all the fora, uh, not only government, but uh, the various uh, stakeholders have been provided with support to participate. And they have also been working with uh, uh, the regional IGF to make sure that the forum happens uh, every time it's needed. But he said, are all the stakeholders uh, uh, present at uh, all the levels? Because he's saying that uh, when we are talking about government, we think about the ministry only. We are not speaking about uh, the parliament, while the parliament is an essential part of uh, uh, government according to him because they are voting the laws and so on. He's also asking if we are working with the chambers of commerce uh, in Africa, which are also part of the process and uh, which most of the time are forgotten. Uh, he said that uh, despite the weakness of the ICT industry in Africa or uh, because of the weakness of ICT industry in Africa, the private sector is not sufficiently represented. And uh, I think it's right. When you look at uh, <clears throat> people who are present here, you will see only very few people from the private sector. And this was also the case uh, in all the discussions. Uh, he said also the multilingualism is not uh, well taken into account. And he's asking if uh, in the ECA website we have the big languages in Af Africa. Yes, we have French and English that I know. Uh, and uh, but we don't have uh, Spanish and Portuguese as you are suggesting because uh, uh, we are the UN and the UN languages in Africa are French and English only. Uh, he's saying that also we are discussing about uh, multi-stakeholderism while we should also concentrate on the African position on uh, to determine the uh, feature of uh, the IG where will be placed and so on. Uh, I can uh, reply to him for this, that uh, we will discuss it when time comes, but for the time being, we are only discussing the multi-stakeholderism. Uh, definitely, we'll have uh, a forum to discuss Africa's position in the next weeks to come. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Tijani. Okay, thank you. Okay, now, since uh, time uh, is running, so we'll uh, go for the discussion. So, who... Who wants to take the floor? Okay, Mr. Tijani, who else? Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I appreciate that uh, our friend from Francophonie spoke in French for uh, diversity. I normally do the same at uh, ICANN, but uh, at ICANN we have translation here. We don't have. To save time, I will speak English. You asked if parliamentarians are uh, part of the stakeholders. They are part of the stakeholders. I want to remind you that uh, during the WSIS, the parliamentarians was one of the 21 fam uh, families of the civil society. So they are not excluded. They are part of the civil society. Second thing, you, you ask it uh, if uh, Africa 
uh, uh, you said that Africa had better to, uh, uh, to try to had, have a position regarding the, the, the change which is going on now, better than uh, 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 running uh, after the multi-stakeholder model. I don't agree with you because uh, to have a position, if we don't, uh, if we don't stick to the multi-stakeholder model, we will have the position of the governments only. And I don't think it is a good thing. I think that the multi-stakeholder model is a real good thing for our people. And uh, secondly, uh, 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 the, if, if Africa don't participate in all the, uh, the international fora, Africa will not have any chance to express its position. So we need the multi-stakeholder model participating in the international fora so that we can express the position of Africa as a whole and not Africa as, a, as governments. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Tijani. Who has, okay. Uh, yes, we will give you floor after the floor. Okay, please. Okay. For university, me too, I speak French. Euh, je suis aussi inquiet de ce que la notion de décisionnalisation de l'IGF ne change le fait qu'au niveau de l'IGF il n'y avait que des espaces d'échange et non des espaces de décision est-ce que on prend conscience que dans ce changement il se peut qu'on soit dans une position d'espace de décision et si on n'intègre pas dès à présent l'espace multilingue en fait, l'espace multilingue pour que chaque peuple puisse s'exprimer, il y a de fortes chances qu'une seule partie du monde décide pour le reste de ce qu'il faut faire. Merci. Merci. Ok. Thank you, Mr. Akosi. Well, not. And Kosi. Okay, thank you. Because we have Akosi, but it's the next door, Côte d'Ivoire. Kosi is uh, Benin? Okay, sorry. Okay, I will get the, uh, give the floor to Mr. Emmanuel Ajovi, and after that, we will conclude. Thank you. Ah, il n'y a pas d'autres questions. <laughs> Non, je, je crois que pour ce qui concerne la première, la première préoccupation, disant que les parlementaires font partie de la famille de la société civile, je crois qu'il faut faire évoluer cette notion parce que je ne suis pas sûr que les parlementaires se sentent à l'aise dans la famille de la société civile. Ça peut euh, faire partie des débats, des points, qui, des aménagements de, de sommets... Euh, mondial sur la société de l'information, mais je crois qu'il faut dépasser ces aménagements. On est, on est à une autre étape et quand je parle de la représentation des parlementaires, c'est d'abord sur le plan national. On a besoin des parlementaires pour voter un certain nombre de lois, de tests. Si vous ne les associez pas aux décisions, les parlementaires ne, ne comprendront pas ce qui se passe. Et après, ce sont les petits fonctionnaires qui vont leur, les, leur amener des tests à voter et ils peuvent voter n'importe quoi au niveau des pays. Donc il faut les prendre en compte comme acteurs spécifiques, susceptibles de faciliter les données après. Donc je crois qu'il faut dépasser cela et, 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 et les inviter de plus en plus au niveau des différents forums pour qu'ils comprennent aussi bien sur le plan national et que sur les autres plans. Cela dit, je voudrais rapidement dire que je soutiens ce que Anne Rachel avait dit par rapport à la, à la question de la viabilité des réunions qui se multiplient. Il va falloir réfléchir pour pouvoir réduire cela, sinon on ne va pas s'en sortir. On n'a pas les moyens, on n'a pas l'industrie nécessaire pour financer tout cela. Il faut être clair là-dessus. La, la deuxième question concerne 
la, la participation au, au, au fora ou les choses à venir. Et vous soutenez que si on continue comme ça, c'est le gouvernement qui va donner leur point de vue. Ah, c'est pas ça. D'accord. Mais on doit participer, on doit travailler également sur le principe. Moi, je, je n'exclus pas ça. Mais moi, ma position est simple. Ma position, et j'exprime je, là une position de, de, de l'OIF, au-delà de la, de, 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 de la question de la poste, de, de modèle, il faut voir aussi les valeurs et les intérêts des parties prenantes. Quel est l'intérêt ou quels sont les intérêts de l'Afrique dans cette affaire Il faut que ça soit clair. Il faut déterminer quels sont ces intérêts. Et les autres ne viennent pas pour faire des discussions en l'air. Hein. Ils viennent pour faire des discussions stratégiques pour préserver leurs intérêts, pour tenir leur position. Et, et l'Afrique dans cette affaire-là est-ce qu'on va être distrait, on va se laisser distraire par des questions périphériques et ne pas rentrer dans les questions des intérêts de l'Afrique Voilà toute la problématique. Je vous remercie. Ok, thank you very much, Mr. Emmanuel. Ok, hey, I just want to. Ah, we have a remote participant. Okay, uh, please. Yeah. Uh, we have a comment from. Uh, Pon Khaled from Gambia. Uh, this comment is like this. Uh, I do not believe that the ICT industry is weak in Africa. I think Emmanuel should rather have replaced it that regional initiatives should engage more the private sector in our IGF. Just as same countries do the national le like Ni Niger, Gambia, etc. All actors should be print but in africa my opinion is we ignore our techniques and telcos in this forum to the extent that sometimes regional igf we have more connectively when this can easily be sorted out by the private sector if they are involved thank you okay thank you well not okay uh let's go uh What I would like to, to, to say after all this intervention is that uh, we should maintain the multi-stakeholder principle uh, at it is because is the substance of our meetings here and is, is, is the only way where we can get the, uh, uh, the real um, inquiries from African citizen, African population, African countries taken into account. We should not forget that the multi-stakeholders principle are the best way. Then, what uh, Anne Rachel said, Barre as international organization, Barre from ICANN, even um, Emmanuel Jovi, I can say that we can invite them to support technically the, the technical aspect of the remote participants. Because if they want to get involved and if they want to get engaged in, 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 in our uh, issues in Africa, they should, um, they should uh, allow a lot of African participants to be part in our meetings at the national level, regional, as, a, as well as uh, continental. And if they can bring the technical um, uh, 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 expertise in, in order to have more Africans to participate in our meeting, it will be very grateful. So this is the first thing. The second thing is um, Uh, what uh, the civil society said, and I can re uh, re uh, summary in a nutshell, that a good PPP, a good partner, a pri public-private partnership, this can definitely improve this participation. If uh, we can get this private sector, and I know that in the last uh, uh, West African idea held in Abidjan in the July. African Union was, was not there. We had, from the private sector, Google, 
Microsoft, ISOC, AFRIC, Diplo Foundation. We, ha we had all these partners. That means they are involved in this, but they should get uh, more involved uh, than before by taking into account the technical aspect to, to have this, um, even if uh, Africans, they are not there physically, they are not present in the meeting, they, they will follow and they will give their, their voice, they will give their input in uh, the meetings. Last things is from also the international organization, the multilingualism is very important. Now I'm Francophone, but I'm doing my utmost to speak in English, to understand English. It's not easy, but uh, it, it, we, we should improve this. At least two languages in our meeting will be better. Uh, what else? Yes, the strong expert group raised by um, our uh, colleague Mary, we should have a strong expert group. Not only get outcome from our meetings, but after the meeting, we should implement these outcomes. And I think it will be better to put in, in our resolution or outcome that after each meeting, we should organize some strong group in order to follow up with uh, the mailing lists all the, um, the implementation of the outcomes. Okay, now, if you allow me, I will, I, I know that we should finish at six, but if you allow me, well, I will give uh, the... F okay, thank you. My, my co-chair said that it's not uh, necessary to give the floor a 30, 30 second f uh, uh, to the panelists, so I will give him the floor back. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, uh, Yanki, for uh, having moderated this session. Uh, now, uh, I think we had uh, two good uh, sessions, and uh, before we, in my concluding remarks, I would like to to, to inform you that uh, <clears throat> a summary is being uh, prepared by our reporter uh, Lilia Narwaga sitting in front and uh, Kosi Asemenu, where is he? He has gone? No. <laughs> Kosi is behind there. Okay, so we have reporter up to the end and we'll, uh, we have your, I hope all of you have put your uh, Email addresses in the list which have been circulated. Where is the list? We have two lists. Okay, they are around. So we will send you the summary. Uh, and before concluding, I would like to uh, inform you that uh, this session, uh, which is uh, uh, normally organized by the African Union uh, and uh, ECA every year, this year was uh, had as team the multi stakeholder. Uh, consolidation in, in, the, in the process and I think it was very important to, to listen to what Africa was doing because uh, we should do strengthen our multi-stakeholder partnership. You have heard what uh, had happened in, uh, in East Africa where we only had a government to organize the last uh, East African IGF. What has happened in Southern Africa where all the stakeholders uh, took part, also the same as in West Africa. In North Africa, they are still uh, trying to come up with uh, something, and we hope them the best. But we have seen in Nairobi what we have done. We had all the stakeholders represented. We had government, private sector, civil society, academia. Everybody was there. And uh, I think we also t should take this opportunity to thank again the government of uh, Kenya for having hosted the uh, second uh, African IGF, and we are okay. Yes, I think that should be, the government of Kenya should be uh, uh, applauded for this. And we also uh, thank the, our other sponsors who helped us to organize the African IGF. They are ICANN, uh, Internet Society, Uniforum, Organisation Internationale de la Francophonie, Google. 
NAPC at the international level, and at the local level, we had the Ministry of Information and Communication Technology uh, of Kenya. We had a TESPOC, which were our main partner at the national level. ISOC Kenya also was our, one of our main partners at the national level. We had the Kenya Communication Commission, which also had uh, hosted a dinner for, uh, for us. We had the Kenya Educational Network and uh, KENIC, which also participated strongly in the meeting. And uh, least but not last uh, is the last but not least the multimedia university of Kenya, which were our host, <laughs> and I believe is represented here by uh, Mr. John Walubengo. He's uh, sitting here. John, please thank you for uh, all your support. And uh, come on, Afrinik, of course, our own our own Afrinik here. <laughs> who has uh, supported us uh, through FIRE, <laughs> the FIRE initiative, which was, uh, which gave yesterday the awards, and uh, which, uh, as I told you, in Kenya, uh, the FIRE initiative uh, was initiated by the prize which was given to our famous Nick Kainor, our internet guru, who decided to start it an award, as an award with Afrinik. So we cannot forget our own uh, organization. So we thank all of you for uh, having participated in this meeting and looking forward to uh, communicating again with you. The meeting is closed. Thank you.